Right, you can retire. I'm 34 in a, in, a, in a time frame. Even though I'm not 34, I'm, I'm a timeless being. I'm just giving y'all a circumference of, you know what I'm saying? Like, me being a part of the organization, I was one of the people in the organization that I know niggas didn't know literature. Niggas never knew they lit. And I got ranks, I got so much position in the organization because I knew the literature. I knew about Larry Hoover's blueprint and what he stood for and what he was about. And I actually got out of jail and I embody that right now every day. I'm not out here killing nobody. I'm not out here selling drugs. I'm not out here tearing the community down. I'm actually out here building our community up every single day. Anybody I talk about, these are I talk about the people that's tearing our communities down, that's tearing the planet down with the frequency. You feel me? Like a lot of individuals, like I say, you know, a lot of people don't even know that he's a political prisoner, man. Larry, Larry Hoover. Is a political prison, you know what I'm saying? All right, and a lot of us have forgotten about political prisoners. So, so what is a political prisoner? All right, what's a political prisoner? A political prisoner is somebody that is locked up because they are against the government, they are against the system, and they have a lot of power. They have a lot of people behind them. So, the government then, um, like to call these people subversive. Subversive just means you against the system. So. You know, once they deem you subversive, once they deem you subversive, once they deem you subversive, um, what? I'm looking for mom, but Zoe told me that mom said that I'll go to the side. She in the room. Oh. Did you go in the room? You couldn't have went in the room. I she ain't gonna do when she jumped out the window. Look at it. Kids crazy. Now you ain't trying to look for mom. I told them they couldn't go outside today so they finished cleaning cleaning upstairs. Bro, what you just did, that's my daughter Lele. What you just did was came downstairs and trying to see if you could peek outside with your see what your little friends doing. You knew I was down here, but you knew I was teaching, so you thought I wasn't gonna be paying attention. That's what she just did. And then what you doing down here? I know y'all ain't finished cleaning up up there. I don't even smell no 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 fragrance in the air yet, so y'all can't be. You feel me? Uh, 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 I'm looking for mom. How you looking for mom? Mom upstairs in the room. You just came from that upstairs. So why wouldn't you come out your room and go knock on mom's door? See what I'm saying? You came right down the stairs. You're not looking for mom, because where did mom go when she jumped out the window? You know what I'm saying? You're trying to have slick me, man. Like, I, I feel me? Like, come on, man. Man, go finish. <coughs> go finish doing what you was asked to do, you feel me? I let them do whatever they want to do, but then when it's time to clean, they always try to be slick. You know what I'm saying? I spoil them, spoil her, like give her whatever she wants, she don't for nothing. I'm trying to sneak out. Uh, he, don't, he teaching, he ain't gonna be paying attention, he be into it, he be, she thinks she know me. I know pops, he be into it, he ain't gonna know, I'm on your ass. I'm multitasking here. I gotta be a father to you, and I gotta be a father to my planet. You know what I'm saying? I'm, multi, I'm multitasking here, nigga. All right, so we back talking about Larry Hoover, man. Okay. So um, even when I titled, like, the lecture, like, just keeping it real, I, I kind of double thought about it. I'm like, damn, do I even want to make a lecture about him? Because like, I don't want people to think, like, I'm being biased or, like, I'm trying to just glorify gang life or something because he's looked at as a gang leader. By mainstream America, <clears throat> because this is how he has been painted in the media, and the 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 elites want him to be looked at as like that. He's not the only political prisoner. Jeff Ford is many more of them, all right? But these political prisoners, these are people that stuff had a real something they actually stood for, all right? To understand Larry Hoover, you got to understand to understand the whole Larry Hoover, you know. You know, uh, story, all I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is we're going to look at this real quick. We're going to take, because look, we, I'm going to show y'all what they said about him on Wikipedia, which is nothing. Nothing really. You know what I'm saying? He just painted as a criminal on here. You feel me? So I just want y'all to see that real quick. Then I'm going to move the fucking tablet. Nigga, I come from this shit for real. I don't need no tablet, nigga, to speak about what's really going on when it come to this. When it come to this. When it come to this right here, you better know. For real. So look, right, let's see what they saying about Larry Hoover. Free the old man, political prisoner, man. All right, he was born November 30th, 1950, Jackson, Mississippi. He's 70 years old. He's been locked up his whole life. 
It's a fact. Lele. Hold on. Hey, Lele. No. Hey. They was knocking on the door. So, so he age 30, all right? He's from Jackson, Mississippi. A lot of people think he's from Chicago because Chicago is the headquarters of the GDs, which is the group he's responsible for, but he's not from Chicago, all right? And all real members know that as well, but... Larry Hoover was born in Jackson, Mississippi. Shout out to Mississippi. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to the guys in Mississippi, too. Shout out to the guys everywhere, though. But this some his nicknames. King Larry, Children, Larry Bernard, Larry Hoover Jr., Tyree Hoover. All right? Criminal status. In prison at ADX Florence in Florence, Colorado. So let's click on this real quick so y'all can see where he at. All right, United States Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility. This is Florence ADX. Okay, so ADX is where they send all of the harshest cr criminals. You know what I'm saying? Like all of your most famous, like Marilyn Manson. You know what I'm saying? Some of the most famous people you could think of that that have committed crimes <coughs> are, in, are in ADX. Like, let me tell you something. I've been through the feds before when I was on federal extradition, right? I went through the feds. And you got levels in the feds, you know what I'm saying? You got camps, people that's in camps, that's like the lowest level. They ask, like, do they know what they want to do? They on their way home. But you got max, people in the fed with max. You know, them fed penitentiaries, they be serious. All right? All right? Now, like, big money. Oh, no, that ain't big money. That's big bloody, what's that, bloody, bloody something they call it, it's a federal prison, motherfuckers stay down in there, they call it bloody something, big money is the actual penitentiary in, in Illinois, but basically, like, some of the most famous criminals you could think of is that ADX, alright, ADX, you know what I'm saying, this is where they send the terrorists, like, like, if the government was to try to come and lock me up, you know it would be federal, you know what I'm saying? Cause, because they'll look at me and be like, he's subversive, he rebellious, he's a he's he's a, he's declaring his sovereignty. You see what I'm saying? Well, but what I want to say to America is this. You right, I am declaring my sovereignty from you bitches. This is my land. Why can't I declare my sovereignty from y'all? Y'all didn't y'all say y'all did that with Great Britain? Why is it America that when black people and Latino people will wake up and know who we is and we want to declare our sovereignty from y'all bitches and want our separation? Now, all of a sudden, we can't do it. But in y'all American Revolution, y'all clearly said that y'all went to war with Great Britain for y'all independence because y'all wanted to be 13 sovereign states. It's funny how y'all be contradicting y'all self. If y'all gained y'all sovereignty from Britain, what's wrong? Why y'all can't understand our, our struggle? You see what I'm saying, y'all? That's why it's imperative to read history. That's why I showed y'all that early in the lecture. Feel me? Like, read history. These bitches are sitting here and try to, oh, you y'all trying to be sovereign citizens and y'all trying to be you goddamn right we is. Then y'all do that? Y'all did the same shit, even though we know that war was really us now. We know they was really fighting, but in y'all history books, y'all said y'all was fighting Britain. All right? So, ADX, however, is where they send motherfuckers they consider terrorists. A terrorist is anybody they consider a threat to the country. Larry Hoover is considered a terrorist. So that's why he's a political prisoner. Anybody that's fighting for right, like Tupac there, Matolo Shakur, who fought in the black, like a lot of the people that was in them Black Panther parties that didn't get killed, they ass still locked up. Y'all, did y'all know that? A lot of y'all don't even know that. Did y'all know <coughs> that a lot of those people that was fighting in the wars in the 60s and them, them, our, of, our, of our people that was fighting in the 50s, 60s, they was a part of all them groups, Black Panthers and these different groups, militia groups that was fighting against the oppressors. If they didn't kill them, guess where they at right now? In jail, nigga. They locked up right now. Matolo Shakur is still locked up right now as a political prisoner.
Asana Shakur, who's overseas in Cuba, is still deemed a political prisoner and is still number one to this day on the FBI's most wanted list. Facts, like, that's why I always call the FBI and the CIA out, like, man, I already know what it is. I'm waking my people up so y'all gonna automatically feel like I'm a terrorist. So, fuck it, it is what it is for me. You see what I'm saying? Just know when y'all coming, I'm coming. It ain't gonna go like it went last time. Last time I came out with my hands up when y'all raided my shit, it ain't gonna go like that this time. That was when I believed that y'all was following the law. But when I found out that you bitches the same motherfuckers who, who y'all got running down on us with guns, the motherfuckers raping our kids and all that shit, y'all ain't got nothing coming from me but motherfucking death and destruction, boy. Y'all ain't got nothing coming from me but death and destruction, boy. I, I never honor a law, nigga. Fuck I look like, nigga, real life, that type of energy with me. For real. But yeah, though, look, so ADX, right? This is what they want to send me to. This is what they want to send me, y'all. Like anybody that's fighting for is right. So ADX is where they send out they, they terrorists. And this is the worst. This is where you don't want to be. That's how they sales look. Three by five. You know what I'm saying? We was in six by nines in jail. They in three by fives. <coughs> you hear me, y'all? Look at they sell, bro. And they ass under the ground. <coughs> Look at they sell. They sitting here all day. Solitary confinement. This is where Larry Hoover at. This how the cell look, y'all. Then he got two gates inside his cell in front of the door. Y'all see that? This how he been living for the last 40 some years. Larry Hoover. All oh, because he had a vision, y'all. So now that y'all know where he at. All right, and how they been mistreating them too. They been getting down on them though. Yeah, they been getting down on them dirty though. Look what he convicted for. Murder, conspiracy, extortion, and continuing to engage in a criminal enterprise. Now what's the criminal enterprise that they talking about he been engaging in? They talking about <coughs> the gangster disciples. All right, so let's read real quick about Larry Hoover. As y'all can see, this is what they saying about him. This is how long his Wikipedia is. It ain't even that long, y'all see it? They got the narrative painted about this black guy, what they want to be painted about him. Check him out. He's 70. They still won't let him out. That's how scared they is of him because they know where his mind is at. You know what I'm saying? They don't fear him. They fear his mind. You feel me? Facts. All right? So check it out. Larry Hoover, born November 30th, 1950. Look how they label him, y'all. Look how they trying to tarnish his legacy. He died. That's his legacy that they didn't put on here. He's an American gang leader. First off... <coughs> The Gangster Disciples is the only fucking organization that gets attacked like this, y'all. Y'all think I'm lying, don't y'all? <clears throat> Recently, they've been starting to do the bloods. But let me tell y'all some real shit. Do you know that it was just like a bunch of GDs in Atlanta not too long ago? Maybe back in like 2017, 2018. They were indicted. And they ain't even really do shit major. Like, they raided all the GDs in Atlanta, right? They indicted a lot of GDs in Atlanta. Big, big indictment. Feds, right? And you know when that when that when that story came out, you know what was crazy to me? I'm like, it's crazy because I could see if they was in Atlanta on some big meat shit. The GDs in Atlanta that they indicted and locked up. You know what I'm saying? Free KK. You feel me? But they wasn't. They was just doing basic street shit. And they still came down on them GDs in Atlanta. Why? Whenever you say you GD, you're part of Larry Hoover. The elites already know Larry Hoover's vision because they, they got his blueprint. So they are already thinking that just because you repping what Larry Hoover stood for, that your ass is, you know, you in Larry's vision. Though press is not really peeping the game that most GDs are not in Larry Hoover's vision. They have no clue about the organization. All right. So they going to live out the life they know. They going to sell drugs. They going to kill. They going to do all that. They not thinking that when they say they GD and they going to kill somebody that the feds put that body on Larry Hoover. Honestly, Larry Hoover is literally doing six life sentences right now at ADX Florence. Majority of that is for what other motherfuckers did because he ain't do all that shit. He been locked up since... 1973. Larry Hoover 
has been locked up since 1973. It's 2021, y'all. You do the math. These BDs do this rich and famous like the Lil Durk niggas. I always got to say his name, y'all, because he the face. He said he the Chicago Jay-Z, and he is right now. So the soul, agent of darkness, and he BD. He rapping, he make it known. So hey, I'm not telling on the nigga. It's known he a BD. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? You know how many You know how many niggas been dying since this BDGD war like hit social media? Like the BDGD war been going on in Chicago since the 80s. <clears throat> but it really just took off when Chief Keith blew up. Amongst the younger generation in Chicago on the South Side. All right. <clears throat> what y'all mean to say? Y'all can't hear it? My finger ain't on no mic. <clears throat> yeah, y'all trolling. You go outside. Take that jacket off. What I tell you about that? It's, it's too hot for that jacket. Go put one of them, um, your little shirt on or whatever you be having on and go outside and play with your friends. Okay. Take your little sister with you, too. All right. All right, y'all good, though? All right, cool. All right, so. So. What I'm trying to point out is, like, Larry Hoover ain't do none of this shit, right? But since Chief Keith came out, right? Chief Keith came out, he's a BD, too. Chief Keith came out, and that ignited a whole... It sparked the war because the, 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 the kids started rapping. The youth started rapping about these murders they was doing. So, you know, when you, when you put this shit in the sun, like, before Chief Keith came out, like... <clears throat> yeah, people died, whatever. Yeah, that always happened, but... Nobody in Chicago was saying we were smoking on dead ops. You know how long people been killing each other in Chicago, and we never was that disrespectful. We ain't never be like, man, we smoking on our on our on people we killed or people that died. That was never us. Motherfucker died, they died. Got him, it's over with. Fuck you, woke, you go on. But when Chief Keith came out, it was a different energy. And then you had another GD kid rapper named JoJo from Chicago that came out with a BDK song, and that. Only intensified the GDBD war. And that was 2012 we talking. So since 2012, you can officially say in a new era, the BDGD war reignited in 2012. And that's when, that's when, that also ushered in um, what's now known as the drill scene in music and in Chicago. Yeah, they be up there drilling. Like, all that came with a certain sound. Okay? But I want you to notice something. Do you know how many motherfuckers died? Y'all just don't have a clue. You don't have a clue because you're not from Chicago. If you're from Chicago, you know what's going on. Do you know how many people didn't die, like, honestly, in the streets of Chicago since the BDGD war started in 2013? Like, literally, majority of the people that that started that wave, they ass is dead or in jail. All right? Why am I mentioning this? Because... You ain't gonna see Lil Durk and them niggas getting locked up and getting six life sentences and getting hit with every fucking body that got killed for what he rap on his songs, do you? Because he sold his soul. He working with them people. Y'all don't hear me though. Let me say that again. You know how much Lil Durk, because he's the biggest BD rapper. Thank you, babe. Then bragged about killing niggas. Every song is about killing a nigga. Do you know how many niggas got killed off his music? He's in, he inspiring it, instigating shit, steady dissing niggas dead, homies. Shit, you know GD, I know GD's person that was gonna let shit go. And then Lil Durk make a song and that folks and them, now they gotta go slide now. Just cause he made the song and you dissing niggas and you all the way down here in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just being real. I'm just being real. Do you see? I'm making a point though. We know Dirk the Clown and all that. 
That ain't why I'm mentioning his name. I'm drawing a comparison here. Okay? All right? Just listen. Well, I'm, I'm making a point here. The only murder that they ever said Larry Hoover did himself, and they never even said he did it. The only murder that Larry Hoover was tied to his name was when a 19-year-old kid named Pookie got killed in Chicago. February 26, 1973. Look at it. Y'all y'all might not know that. For all of y'all thinking Larry Hoover some murderer, nigga, he ain't murdered nobody. Read what they say. Biography. On the evening of February 26, 1973, William Pookie Young, a 19-year-old neighbor, neighborhood drug dealer, was abducted and later shot in the shot to death in an alley near 68th. In Union, in Chicago's Inglewood neighborhood. Okay? Y'all pay attention now. It gets interesting here. His killing was ordered by Hoover. So they didn't even say Larry Hoover did it. They said Larry Hoover got him killed. His killing was ordered by Hoover after his name was mentioned as one of three people accused of stealing drugs and money from the gang five days earlier. On March 16, 1973, Hoover, along with Young's Killers, <coughs> a black disciple member, Andrew Howard, this is why I'm trying to tell people why the BDs out there killing the GDs and vice versa. The BDs and GDs ain't supposed to be at war. Once again, when y'all do that dumb shit, y'all make the organization look bad. That's the exact reason why Jeff Ford... And Larry Hoover can't get the fuck out of jail right now because you got BDs and GDs killing each other and GDs all over America robbing, stealing, killing motherfuckers, selling drugs. And they paint a narrative that since he's the leader of the organization, he the one making everybody do all this shit. When ain't not one GD member, including myself, ever talked to Larry Hoover, G. The average people that's, that's GDs now, I don't care if he was old school, your ass ain't probably never met Larry Hoover. <laughs> you got a few OGs. Hold on. You got OGs out here now that have met Larry Hoover and have been in jail with them all there. I'm not talking about them. The point I'm making is the average youth. I, I was born in 1986. I'm GD crazy. Growth and development. BGDN. That's what it is for me. Growth and development. That's what I stand for. That's GD. I ain't never met Larry Hoover. That man been in jail since 1973. I wouldn't even hear yet. That's the point I'm making. And even if you're an OG, unless you was in jail with him or you really ran up under him, you probably never met him. And definitely if your ass 25, 21, you definitely ain't met him or heard him. And not know for a fact, you probably got certain few members that's still keeping up with him. Majority of them people ain't reaching out to Larry Hoover and keeping up with him and all that problems. You feel me? Because if they were, they'd be trying to help get the streets together then. They really... Right? They'd be trying to really push the real vision. Okay, he locked up. That'll stop other members from pushing the real vision, though. <clears throat> he locked up. Most members ain't pushing the real vision of unity and growing and developing. And when you say on the boss, that means brothers are the same struggle, nigga. On the boss, niggas. What's the boss? Nigga. Feel me? What's the boss? You feel me? Because in order for me to really put Larry Hoover's story in a function, I gotta go into that literature a little bit. And what he stood for. That's the only way, that's the only way you're gonna find it at. You're not gonna find that shit on Wikipedia, nigga. Uh, on here, nigga, it clearly says Larry Hoover was locked up for ordering him and a BD supposed to got a 19-year-old kill. That's the murder that got Larry Hoover locked up. And he's supposed to get out of 95, and then they hit his ass with a RICO act. Saying that, saying that he was the reason all the GDEs was killing motherfuckers and everything they did, they basically tied it to Larry Hoover. They had wiretaps on him when he was in jail. I mean, none of this is on Wikipedia. This is what I know because I'm a real member, nigga. You ain't going to find what that on Wikipedia. Matter of fact, 
Let me close this now. I said what I had to say. He got six life sentences. He in ADX. I don't even want to put the laptop in front of me no more because I ain't even trying to play like that. I'm a real life member here. I don't need none of that shit in front of me to speak about the old man because I'm really in the vision when a lot of people that represent us is not. Niggas pose, niggas imposters. And they be in their 40s, 50s, way been here longer than me. Facts. Niggas ain't out here talking. Niggas ain't out here trying to grow and develop. Niggas ain't out here pushing the vision. None of that. Motherfuckers focus on they self. See what I'm saying? But that ain't what Larry Hoover stood for. You feel me? Like, <clears throat> in the beginning, before he even came up with GD, he was one of the original Black Peace Stones. Read it with Jeff Ford, who was another political prisoner. But I'm not going to go too much into Jeff Ford because I got him coming up on another lecture of political prisoners. This lecture is strictly about Larry Hoover and growth and development. And I see some people commenting like, Talk about this, talk about that. Look, with all due respect to you, stop saying dumb shit like that in my university, G. I, I decide what the lecture topic is for the day. If you feel like you don't want to join that lecture, just don't watch it. But don't come in this motherfucker and be like, hey, talk about this. I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about this right now. That's that's going to be a lecture for a whole other day and time. It's a time and place for everything. Today is seven-fold day, so we done talked about independence. And now we're going to talk about seven-fold as in this growth and development. And a political prisoner that the world needs to know who's a political prisoner who's being treated unfairly and hasn't been treated unfairly since 1973. Fuck is you talking about? And all these fake ass little imposters out here claiming to throw these ranks up and they don't know what it mean. Nigga, don't throw these guns up if you out here killing your own people. Don't throw these guns up if you out here selling drugs to the people, nigga. That's still killing your people, nigga. Now, if you did it before, you're supposed to let that shit go. Because, nigga, that's number two in Larry Hoover's vision. No drugs. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that, though? Y'all wouldn't even know that, though, because most of America don't know Larry Hoover's true vision. But the fans know because they got a copy of our blueprint, nigga. We don't do no stealing, no robbing, no lying, no cheating, no rape. That shit not 1 through 16, man. We got real-life lessons in our literature, man. This shit is about really getting through the through life. This shit ain't got nothing to do with no gangbanging, man. So when niggas sit there... And do and throw these guns up and break their head off to the right and go rob motherfuckers and sell drugs and kill motherfuckers. You make it hard on Larry Hoover, and that's the reason why right now Larry Hoover is looked at as, the, as a gang leader because you niggas don't know what this shit is about. I asked a nigga right now what this left fork mean. Each one of these points has a meaning. Do you know? And uh, each one of these points on the right got a meaning. Do you know? Nigga, when we stand, they got a meaning. Do you know what that mean? Don't use no gang, nigga. We ain't never been no gang. We an organization that the government, Cointel Pro. The turn, 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 uh, coined as a game <laughs> to tear down the unity in the community, nigga. And they did this shit in the sixties. They attacked the gangster decide the grow, uh, the uh, growth and development. They attacked BDs, vice lord, or leaders, Latin king leaders, Bloods, Crips, along with the black man, everybody. They took all the organizations down that was fighting against the oppressors, nigga. And then when they moved all the leaders out the way, they then put drugs in the community. In the late 70s and 80s. And then once the drugs came to the community, now all the people that was GD or these different members or these organizations, leaders going out the way, still need to make money. They start selling drugs. They didn't know it was going to kill their people like that. And then the people that started doing crack didn't know it was going to have the effect they had. It was just like an end thing. That's why I be telling y'all, like, all y'all that's sipping lean right now and popping perks and Zans, y'all going to be motherfucking crackheads in like 15 years, G. Y'all going to be Zan heads on the corner, shaking and shit with you. Lean, like, I'm just being honest. That's how it was from crackhead. Like, everybody was doing it, and niggas ain't know that it was going to have an effect. And then, then it hit in the 90s, and niggas, and then we grew up with crackheads, so we knew not to do it. So that's what, but see, motherfuckers who started with the Zans, the leans, y'all going to be Zan heads, X I'm telling, I'm trying to help y'all out. You see how y'all laugh at these crackheads and these bums? That's how, that's going to be yo, that's you in 10 years, nigga. If you do pills and all that shit, I'm telling you, if you don't, if you don't stop I'm just going to be a real OG, nigga. I ain't going to never lie to you got nothing. All right? So when they usher drugs into the community in the 80s, with no leadership, you kill the head, the body will fall. You know what I'm saying? All right? So they killed the head, now the body going to fall. Now people selling drugs just for money. But once money start getting in the way, now gangs start warring with each other for the money, and that's where all your gang wars of the late 80s and 90s come from. That's when gang banging really started, nigga. Gang banging started in the 90s, nigga. The niggas wasn't gang banging in the 70s and the 80s like that. Mid 80s going to the 90s, especially 90s. <clears throat> and in the mainstream America, that's what they wanted anyway, so they promoted it with movies like Colors, 
with movies like South Central, with, with classic movies like Boys in the Hood, Juice, all that shit was to promote the gang lifestyle culture to uh, to my generation, which is why the fuck I grew up fanning shit down, wilding out in Chicago. And many more like myself. Until I remember who I was. You feel me? Who the real enemy is. That's why I tell all the gangs in America, like, it's how to unite. Like, nigga, y'all ain't gangs, y'all organizations. And if you look into your organization and what it was about, it started from a positive and it stood for something. Crips, community, community resistance and progress. Blood, meaning we protecting everything. They got the same blood we got as a Nunakais. Nigga, as black people, as Latino. Come on, man. GD, what GD mean? The grow and develop. Nah, we ain't no gangster disciples, nothing, nigga. Grow and develop. That's for everybody in life, nigga. That applies to everybody. BD, ain't no black disciple, nigga. BD's better development, Lil Dirk. Why you misleading the multitude, nigga? That's why I don't like Lil Dirk, y'all, because I'm a real GD, and he claimed to be a real BD, but he got all this influence, and he got BDs and GDs warrant. More because of the shit he on, he could easily stop that shit. When FBG Duck was trying to squash the BGD, GD war in Chicago, even though he lost his brothers and homies to the shit, that was real growth and development, man. Happy trans that it's a duck. That's real, man. That's why I don't fuck with Dirk and them like that. It's like, fuck oh, them whole all right, nigga. Fuck the fuck that nigga. That's why I be like that, y'all. And then he be killing people around him and all that, all that phony fake shit, that age in the darkness and keeping all the chaos going. But y'all go, y'all go look up what's going on in Chicago. You see mamas out there crying and people out there hurt behind their kids getting killed. But guess what? What keep that violence going? The music, nigga. That's why I changed my music. That's why I said we if you rap. Nigga ain't no wrong with rapping, but how about when you talk about ops? You can still rap about ops. You can have your gun say fuck the ops, but let the ops be the cops. That's all I've, that's all I've been preaching. Let the ops be the cops. Nigga, you can rap BD, you can rap GD, you can be Vice Lord, you can be Stone, you can be King, you can be Crip, you can be Blood, whatever tribe you came from out them streets rapping. And if you ain't come out them streets, don't rap that. Be you. But I don't care if you came out the streets. I don't care if you went to college. At the end of the day, we all got the same genetics. And we got one opposition, and that's the elites. And they frontliners is the police. That's what we got to knock down. Them the frontliners, nigga. These police out here killing us, doing us dirty. Dirty, dirty, dirty. So I don't want to hear none of that. Oh, he said, get out of Yeah, niggas, fuck the police. I feel like that. Because of what they do to us every single day. I'm not going to let y'all kill me, nigga. Y'all not going to kill me instead of an accident. Nigga, I'm going to take y'all bitches with me, nigga. A whole lot of y'all. Ain't going to be no, oh, well, it was an accident. I'm not even going to give y'all that type of chance to play with me like that. Why do you think I said don't even pull me over? G, it's going down. I'm a revolutionary. I come out here every day ready to, like I know it could be my last on the rim, nigga. I'm a revolutionary. I'm waking my people up. That's all I'm really doing. But they send me death threats all the time, government, nigga. You think they don't want to lock me up? You think they ain't going to try to come up with something? Down the road, try to lock me. It ain't gonna never work, though, nigga. I'll never go back to jail. I ain't did nothing. I'm a, I'm a sovereign being. Y'all country, y'all laws in this land don't apply to me. I'm a sovereign being. And I don't need no paperwork to validate that, nigga. I don't need America to validate that. Larry Hoover don't need y'all to validate his, him being a sovereign being. That man ain't even did nothing. Y'all y'all said he did something. He, he didn't even get locked up on the original murder like he did it. They said that he hired a motherfucker somebody else do it. But the last time I checked in Chicago, even if I did hire you to do a murder and the police find out, nigga. You feel me? And we talking about, he caught this in 73 when they was giving niggas 10 years for a murder. How, why is he still in jail? It ain't like they said Larry Hoover killed 25 people himself. They ain't got one article saying Larry Hoover shot nobody. So how the fuck he end up not getting out? Then 93, 94, 95 come... You just go lock up a bunch of GDs so you know ain't really GD. Because they out here doing other shit that don't represent him and put all that on him and use it as a reason to give him six life sentences so that he can never get out. Because you fear the power of what Larry Hoover stand for, which is growth and development. Black unity. Nigga, when we say on the boss, that ain't gang banging. When we say on the boss, a real member, no. Boss means brothers are the same struggle for those out there in America that don't know what Larry Hoover stood for.